All right, let's do this. So, I've been talking about hockey cards lately. This is a box of score from 1991, which um, this was after the 89-90 season. This is American, so when you're looking online, the purple ones are the American ones. Red box means it's Series 1 of the Canadian. Blue, blo blue box means it's Series 2 of the Canadian. So, um, I, I, I do have most sets from back then. Uh, I've had various ideas for ways I can get creative with hockey cards. Believe me, Yvonne and I have talked about the idea of having a, a wall that basically I have like a wallpaper of hockey cards with. So something along those lines. And again, I've talked about making magnets out of some. Now, here's the question mark. I've never got a Bobby Orr out of these cards. They were supposed to be inserted. They are hard to find. I'm sure I could find them easily on eBay and I would, I would order one. But it's more fun to get one out of a pack. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to open these and discuss what I pull out of these packs. And I'm going to explain this in another way. So for people who buy jerseys and say, well, you know, I get the, the Chinese knockoffs because they're cheaper. Well, A, you can find them cheaper than the Chinese knockoffs. People have contacted me and I've pointed out areas you can get them cheaper than the Chinese knockoffs. But if you want to get into hockey cards and you don't feel like spending $100 a box for the new ones, get cheap ones, get the old ones. You're, you're still getting that same collecting experience. And what's better is if you're if you're younger, you're like, who's that guy? And then you find out on the back. So the first card is Mike Lawler with the Washington Capitals. Um, and noteworthy, you can tell it's the American because it's all all English on the back. Uh, Mike brought a steady defensive game to Washington in 1991 after making earlier stops in Montreal and St. Louis. An unsung leader, he's a smooth skater, is quite adept at making a breakout pass out of his own zone. Quite content to stay back and let others rush the puck. He's an intelligent defender who rarely gets caught out of position. After two two seasons, two junior seasons with Brantford of the OHL, Mike signed with the Canadians as a free agent in September of 83, spent two years in the minors before breaking in with Montreal's Stanley Cup winning team of 85-86. Mike played three and a half seasons with the Habs before he was traded to St. Louis. Halfway through 88-89, he served as an alternate captain with the Blues. So actually, this is 90-91. So yeah, on the back it says it's 90-91 season. So... Uh, noteworthy in that that's I graduated high school in 91, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Mark Howe. So Mark Howe with the Flyers. Uh, Rob Brown with the Whalers. Rob Brown, of course, was uh, one of those guys who was really fast out of the gate scoring-wise, and then it just dried up on him. And, in, yeah, this was after his rookie year as a Sergei Fedorov. So technically that's his second-year card. The first-year card was upper deck the year before. So, yeah, that's a Sergei Fedorov. Now, I'm pretty sure the book value of this would be like a dollar. I, I don't know. I don't know who pays for scorecards from back then. And, and I'm, being, I'm being honest. So if you buy scorecards, realize you're not going to be able to resell them for a profit. They're, they're different from the cards guys are buying now where they're trying to flip them. They just sell off the, 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 the base set for cheap, and then they're trying to flip the inserts. The inserts, they're really gambling on big inserts. Ron Francis, that was the year that he was traded to the Penguins. Robert Reichel, that's after his rookie season with the Calgary Flames. Peter Zezel, and then this was a fun subset that they had. NHL brothers, Jeff and Russ Cortnell. Uh, top prospect, wow. Toronto, Alex Godinyuk. Yep, and then he would get sent to Calgary as part of the uh, Doug Gilmore trade. Another top prospect card in here, Jeff Daniels with the Pittsburgh Penguins. There's uh, Paul Gillis for the Chicago Blackhawks. For the New York Rangers, one of the tougher hockey players at the time, Joey Koser. Islanders, David Volick. LA Kings, Todd Ellick. I liked Ellick. He played with the Stars too, I believe. Uh, and for the New York or for the Montreal Canadiens. Peter Svoboda. So, Peter Svoboda for Montreal fans who remember, and for people who are keen to know, yep, that's that's Peter Svoboda that's a, an agent now for players. So, Peter Svoboda, I, I know he's an agent. I'm trying to think of for who, but I know I've, I've seen him as an agent for, I'm pretty sure it's multiple players. All right, so that's one pack. And see right out of that, you, you can, every, every card on the back had a bio back then. All right, second pack. And there's a Mario Lemieux. 
Minnesota North Stars, John Casey. There we go. One of my favorites. See? See? There you go. Minnesota North Stars, Brian Bellows. Calgary Flames, Dougie Gilmore. So this is before he was traded to Toronto. Art Ross Trophy belonged to Wayne Gretzky. Gretzky cards, according to Beckett, are almost universally a dollar or a dollar fifty. So this is an artwork Dream Team Center, Wayne Gretzky. Uh, the franchise, the Quebec Nordiques version. There's Joe Sackick. Minnesota North Stars. Their other goaltender, Brian Hayward. So there, I got the the starter and the backup in the same pack. We're all set. More brothers. Rich, Brian, and Ron Sutter. More brothers. Brian and Joe Mullen. Top prospect, Jared Scaldi. I remember him. Okay, here is a goaltender I talked about in a video yesterday. Daniel Bandit Berthiome. And there, there he is on the back. And of course, he, he does fishing fishing stuff now so kurt giles minnesota north stars boston bruins reggie lemelin and for the calgary flames frank musel or franciszek musel see all kinds of really fun players in there again if if you're looking if you're looking for value if you're like i want cards that are worth money then Anything from 91 and before isn't, uh, well, 90 and 91, 92. It's not your, not your thing. They were way overproduced. Daniel Merwa. Now, uh, I have to say with Merwa, he had 21 goals, 9 assists that year. Uh, he was one of those uh, that, that the Toronto media really hyped up. He was going to be this big star, and it, it never really quite got to where they thought it would. Uh, top prospect, Brian Marchman. One of the most reviled players of, of his time in terms of dirty hits. Um, pretty sure knee on knees and hip checks were, were a known thing with Marchman. Uh, Stanley Cup champions, 1991. There's the Pittsburgh Penguins. Mario Lemieux with the cup. Another top prospect, Pat Murray. And people wonder why with prospects, I hedge my bets and I go, eh, maybe, maybe because prospects, it's, it's a, it's a tough call. Uh, Mark Messier. And this is one of those. He was a king. There's Larry Robinson. See? Hockey cards are, are good and fun for that. Uh, Kelly Kissio when he was the captain of these guys, the New York Rangers. Now, of course, that's where it says Rangers, the New York jersey I'm wearing. Technically, they stopped wearing in 80, 88. Uh, they, they went back to Rangers across the front of their road jersey. Uh, for the Hartford Whalers, Mark Hunter. Uh, for the LA Kings, John Tonelli. St. Louis Blues, Bob Basson, one of my favorite New Jersey Devils at the time, Alexei Kasatonov, Montreal Canadiens, a very, very steady defenseman, Eric Desjardins, a very, very steady defenseman. For the Whalers, and I know this this is a, a, a rather uh, famous name, Zarly Zalapsky. I mean, what's not to love about the name Zarly Zalapsky, right? Quebec Nordiques, Tony Herkus. This, of course, was when the Nordiques were going through kind of a rough patch. Uh, for the New Jersey Devils, Patrick Sundstrom. So I talked about Sundstrom in recent um, playoff history videos of playoff series where he had eight points in one game. So, again. And for anybody wondering, well, how much did Shannon pay? Pay $10 a box. Now, two boxes, I paid $10 a box. If, if you see somebody who's trying to sell these for more than about $10 a box... Run, run the other way. Uh, because, again, even if you collect the full set, you're not going to get more than about 10 bucks for a set. Like, this this, this is strictly a buy just because, you know, I, I saw these on sale and I went, you know what? Kind of fun to do an opening, an unboxing, do a video that way. But in, in terms of uh, book value, these are just, these are for fun cards. Uh, Boston Bruins, Dave Poulin. Now, of course, a TV analyst. Detroit Red Wings, Jimmy Carson. So Carson that year had uh, 46 points in 64 games, and that was where I uh, really kind of fallen apart for him. Uh, James Patrick with the New York Rangers. 
assistant captain. So I've got their captain and their assistant so far. Captain for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I've actually got that jersey, Rob Ramage. Not a game-worn jersey, but I got one through Ben H Sports. Uh, uh, that actual jersey, Rob Ramage is their captain. Uh, and then this one, which just, you know, that's that's how Guy Lafleur was supposed to look. But, of course, they have him in that set wearing Ranger, a Rangers jersey and a Nordiques jersey. And it just doesn't look great. There we go. First round choice, Eric Lindros. And, of course, uh, Nordiques. Nope. Nope. I, I even look at the jerseys in the background, and you can see Kings and Red Wings and all that. I don't I don't even see it there. But, of course, I don't see Flyers there either, so I, I don't know. His Oshawa jersey is hanging up there on the, on the side. You can see the 88. So, well, just an interesting little card. Just looking choked like me. I'm not, I'm not putting on my jersey. Uh, season leader with 122 assists. Wayne Gretzky, 122 assists. The franchise for Calgary. And, of course, they've got one for each team. It's Al McInnes. New York Islanders. Derek King. Don't worry, I'm not doing the whole the whole box. Not doing a whole box on this. Uh, Murray Barron. For the Boston Bruins, and this is one of those, he was a Bruin, uh, Petri Shkriko. He wasn't a Bruin for very long. He's a Canuck for most of his career. Uh, for the Capitals, Wild Thing, Ally Frady. For Detroit, and this was after his rookie year. Yep. Keith Primo. Now, you want to talk about a slow starter. Keith Primo, three goals, 12 assists, 15 points. There's no doubt that Keith will be one of the Wing Red Wings core players for years to come. He was one of five 1990 first-round draft picks to see significant playing time in the NHL last season. In junior, I was one of the big players. He said I could do whatever I wanted, make some big hits, score goals. Here, I'm just a tall kid playing with a bunch of men. You can't run the game as much as you'd like. Big and strong, Keith scored his first NHL goal December 11th against the Sabres, playing for Niagara Falls in 89-90. He led OHL in both goals, 57, and points 127. He's going to be a good player in the NHL, just starting to find that out. He's just starting to find that out, said Red Wings GM and coach Brian Murray. So see, three goals as a rookie, and there was no, that's it, he's dead, he's done, it's finished, it's over. And there was more scoring back then than you see now, and yet Kako and Hughes, there's already people like, Dad, go look at these guys, they're flops. Luke Richardson with the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm looking forward to seeing him as a head coach in the NHL. It's got to happen, right? Mike McPhee of the... Uh, uh, Montreal Canadiens. You want to talk about a defensive forward that I thought eventually would be a coach. Mike McPhee would be that guy. Uh, at this point, yeah, he had 64 games played for the Canadiens that year. 22 goals, 21 assists, 43 points. Nothing but respect for Mike McPhee. Great player. Again, I'm not doing the whole box. I'm I'm looking at the time and going, alright, I'm, I'm going to devote a certain amount of time and have some fun with this, but I'm not, I'm not doing the whole box because... That's just, that's terrible. Okay, John Casey, I've already had. Brian Bellows, Doug Gilmore. But it's not an upper deck, so I don't end up having all of them doubles. Uh, Theron Fleury, it's a problem upper deck has had forever. So if you open up a pack of upper deck and you go, holy crap, I just bought three packs and two of them are exactly the same. Yeah, upper deck's had that problem for decades. I swear it's on purpose. It has to be. So there's Theron Fleury for the Flames. Um, here he is on the back. He looks, looks a little more weathered. Than he did back then. But you know what? So do I. I was 18 when these cards came out. So I look a lot more weathered too. So uh, for the franchise, Detroit Red Wings, Steve Eiserman. He's still the franchise for the Wings, right? Yeah, Steve Eiserman. Calder Trophy. Rookie of the Year, Eddie the Eagle. Ed Belfour. Uh, the Dream Team on defense. Uh, painted Brian Leach. The franchise for the Vancouver Canucks. People will be glad to see Trevor Linden as the franchise. He was young at that stage, too. Uh, Gary Nyland for the New York Islanders. Yeah, he'd been with the Islanders for a bit at that point. Shell Samuelson for the Philadelphia Flyers. Marty McSorley for the LA Kings. Another Reggie Lemelin. Got that. Got Musil already. Dave Lowry. The uh, St. Louis Blues, and that was after... I'm trying to remember the career tra trajectory with Lowry. Um, Don Sweeney, currently the general manager of the Bruins. There he is as their defenseman. There he is on the back. And it, it is it is bizarre, isn't it, to see these guys as players. 
great respect for somebody who spends 20 years in the game and then when they're done playing hockey and their body's probably all banged up and bruised up, they're like, you know what? I want to run a hockey team. That's what I want to do. I could retire, but I'm going to I'm gonna run a hockey team. All right, New Jersey Devils. John McClain. For the Winnipeg Jets. And there were people who were not happy. He was not one of my favorite all-time Winnipeg Jets. That didn't have him in the top 10. Thomas Steen. Uh, that is a Jets jersey I don't actually have. I have the blue version. I don't have the white version. The white version is hard to find. Uh, Joe Neuendijk. Calgary Flames. 1990-91 highlight. Brett Hall. 50 goals in 50 games. So there's Brett Hall. 50 goals in 50 games. So this is one of those things I'm talking about. Where, yeah, this card's not worth money. It's not a big money card. But you know what? It's still... it's I, I'm, I, I like it. And it, it's a memory, and it's something that if I wanted to, I could put that on a magnet, could throw it on a board, talk about Brett Hall's career. It's something that I've been thinking about doing for a while. Yvonne's problem is, has, well, and, and rightfully she points out, if you if you magnet up a bunch of hockey cards, where are they going? Because you've already got like huge drawers of, of magnets. Where are you putting the hockey cards you've turned into magnets? And then it's a matter of trying to make sure they don't get scratched up so that I'm laminating them. And then it means more laminating paper, and it just it becomes... Onerous. Uh, the franchise for the Montreal Canadiens, Patrick Roy. Absolutely, 100% agreed. Patrick Roy was the franchise at that, at that point. Awards and honors. What? Eric Lindros. So they've they made an excuse for Eric Lindros. Let's look at this. Eric carried home a number of prestigious awards in 1991. He had a, he had a, a, an agreement with SCORE that he would be on scorecards. So SCORE was doing whatever with him at the time. He's holding the Eddie Powers Memorial Trophy presented to Ontario Hockey League's leading scorer. Around the neck are the two gold medals he's won at the World Junior Championships. At left, Eric is shown with the Canadian Hockey League's Plus Minus Trophy and the Circuits Player of the Year Award. He was also named CHL's top prospect and the OHL's most outstanding player. Not a bad haul for the 18-year-old. So you can see the gold medals around his neck and on the back. He's got other trophies there as well, so they're all they're all junior trophies for the most part, and uh, and of course the world junior medals. But it was a okay. We need more more uh, Eric Lindros cards. They weren't as popular that second year as they were the first. All right, uh, Guy Lafleur, and this is an awards and achievements of Guy Lafleur, where they look back on on his past and and everything he had done before that, with an outpouring of emotion. Hockey fans across North America said goodbye to a legend in 1991. After 17 glorious seasons, Guy decided to call it a career and what a career it was. Drafted first overall by the Canadians in 1971. Guy began a run of six consecutive 50-goal seasons in 74-75. He won three scoring titles, played on five Stanley Cup winners, and twice captured the Hart Trophy. Guy ranked seventh on the NHL's all-time goal scoring list with 560. He was seventh when he retired. Yeah, you go look at that list now. Yep. The live puck era had a pretty dramatic effect on where everybody was standing in that. Uh, Kerry Wilson, Calgary Flames. Top prospect for the Calgary Flames, Trevor Kidd. So, pretty solid prospect for Calgary there. Uh, he, he he was. And I know he never quite reached the, the heights that he was expected to, but he was considered a top-notch prospect at the time. Montreal, Patrick Lebeau who never quite reached that level either. There is something with Montreal with the, the French prospects where the, the expectation and the reality don't necessarily match up. For Quebec, Stéphane Morin. I like Morin. I did. 48 games and 40 points that year. Good season, just didn't... He got injured. Uh, Sylvain Cote of the Hartford Whalers. Keith Acton of the Philadelphia Flyers. Acton had played 813 games at that point, 535 points altogether. Randy Carlisle of the Winnipeg Jets. And Eric Weinrich of the New Jersey Devils. And that was, yeah, that's his rookie. Because 76 games, well, not his rookie card, but it technically his rookie season. He played 20, 21 games the first year, 76 the second year, 38 points that year. When the Devils reached the All-Star break in 1991, Eric's uh, plus 20 rating was the best on the squad. It was quite a rookie season for the well-skilled well freshman. Eric played with the poise of a veteran as he finished third among club defensemen in scoring. I wasn't confident I had a spot on the team in training camp this year, but I was confident I could play against people well. 89-90, and Eric won the Eddie Shore Trophy as the AHL's top defenseman and was named a first-team All-Star. 
He was leading all rear guards in scoring that season when New Jersey promoted him on February 17th. Eric played college hockey at the University of Maine and was a member of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. See, you just, who needs Wikipedia? Again, don't worry, I am I am watching the time on this video and it's not going to go that tremendously long. Um, card unboxings, generally, and it doesn't matter. I know people are going to say, well, it's an old one, it's not going to do well. Nah, generally they, they really haven't done all that well. I did have a couple of uh, online sellers who sent me cards to do unboxings and I didn't feel like it, it worked for them or for the channel. As, as being particularly strong. I don't think it made any financial sense for them to send me anything more. So, Okay, uh, New York Rangers, Bernie Nichols. Yep, Bernie Nichols with the Rangers. 71 points, 71 games that year, 73 points. Uh, Buffalo Sabres, second year, Alexander McGillney. Right there. And McGillney, I mean, check out the hair. I mean, come on, right? So we didn't have any kind of paint or anything, but boy, the hair. Uh, for the Vancouver Canucks, I had a lot of question marks as to why Yerky Lume wasn't in my favorites. The answer, because I didn't go to 100. Uh, Philadelphia Flyers, Ron Hextall. The franchise for the Minnesota North Stars, you guys know who that would be. And it was Mike Badano. Goals against average leader in the NHL, because everybody thinks that's a big stat. I don't. I think goals against average is a measure of a team. And uh, that was Eddie Belfour that year. A terrible picture on the back, though. My God. Who... Did did he know that was going to be the picture they used? Was there no... Was that the best picture they could get of him? Dear God. Lady Bing Trophy. So, gentlemanly play. And that goes to Wayne Gretzky. For the Edmonton Oilers, Ken Lindsman. Linsman, of course, played with the Oilers twice. So, they went, yeah, I got to get rid of Linsman. And then, ah, we got to bring him back. Man of the year. Brett Hall. With his, his stick on fire. Uh, what Brett accomplished in 1991 was phenomenal. How could there be any other choice for scores in NHL Man of the Year? The St. Louis Sniper pumped in 86 goals, the third highest total in league history. Brett also... Led the circuit in shots with 389, power play goals with 29, and game-winning tallies with 11. No one releases the puck as quickly and with much accuracy as Brett, said his father Bobby. He has the greatest wrist shot I've ever seen. And Bobby Hall would know. Might be a little bit of favoritism from Bobby Hall towards his own kid there, but yeah. Uh, Randy Gillen for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Norman Rochefort for the New York Rangers. Luke Robitaille for the LA Kings. Kevin Hatcher for the Washington Capitals. He had 24 goals and 74 points in 79 games that year. Yeah, Hatcher was Hatcher was a pretty good scorer on that blue line, and he was big. Uh, Brian Leach for the New York Rangers, obviously. Also for the New York Rangers, and he played 40 games that year, John Van Biesburg. So this is four years before the Stanley Cup Finals run in... and, and and victory in 1994. All right, this is the last pack that I'll do like on this this live live stream. It's not a live stream; it's a video. It just feels like a live stream, but I'm just I'm just talking to me. So, and and sure, I'm talking to Shadow. He's just ignoring me. Okay, I already have that one, and I already have that one, and that one. There you go. The franchise for the Philadelphia Flyers, Rick Tockett. All rookie team. Eric Weinrich, season leader points uh, for the leading rookie is Fedorov. Oh, man, Fedorov on the back. He looks like he's 12. That's insane. I thought Jack Hughes looked young, but, you know, Fedorov looks just as young there as Jack Hughes does now. Uh, the franchise for the Oilers, well, it's got to be Messier, right? Because that was after Gretzky had left. Uh, top prospect for the New Jersey Devils, Miles O'Connor. Callie Johansson for the Washington Capitals. For the Toronto Maple Leafs, you guys may know this, this person from uh, TSN, Dave Reed, analyst and all that wonderful stuff. For the New York Rangers, Troy Millette. That one I've already done. That one I've already done. There we go. Quebec Nordiques, Owen Nolan. 
Guess how many goals Owen Nolan had his first year? Three. 59 games played, three goals, 10 assists for 13 points. And there were plenty of people saying he was a bust. And then year two, I think he had a hat trick in his second game. He had a he had he had more goals, I think, in the first two weeks of the season, his second year, than he had his entire first year. The Nordiques are expecting big things from Owen in the years to come, like 1990 first round picks Peter Nedved and Keith Primo. He faced a difficult adjustment to the pro game last season. He was trying to live up to his number one billing, said Nord's coach Dave Chambers. I said, You don't have to impress us, we already drafted you. Prior to the 1990 draft, Owen's combination of toughness and offensive talent had NHL scouts comparing him to Cam Neely. In 89-90, the big winger led Cornwall in goals with 51, assists with 59, and points with 110, and penalty minutes with 240. He, his development is very important to the future of the franchise, said Chambers. And of course, his best years would be played not necessarily in Quebec, but he had he had good years in Quebec. And when they, they compare him to Neely, well, he wasn't Neely, but he was still a pretty excellent forward, and they're just different. And then also from the Quebec Nordiques, Scott Pearson, who had played with the Maple Leafs and had 11 goals that season. So just as an example, yeah, Owen Nolan had three and Pearson had 11, and I'm thinking that's probably the only time Scott Pearson beat him in scoring. So there you go. Just going through some some packs of, of score, and it's one of my favorite things to do. Uh, and again, for those of you who are a lot younger watch the channel you know who you are which is according to my my stats most of the people watching this channel someday you'll do this someday you'll find hockey cards from this year and you'll say you know i've, I've got to get cards from that year because it's so much fun to look back and you're going to have the same fond memories of of young players right now who are around the same age that you are as i have about some of these players because yeah uh owen nolan's almost exactly a year older than i am so for me, this was this is kind of a fun thing, and uh, you know, does it make me feel old? Uh, probably on some level, but it's also a lot of fun. It's fun to look back, and and to have all these, and they're in pretty darn good condition, which doesn't really matter when they're they're not worth a whole lot. But hey, again, I think if you collect car hockey cards with the idea of getting rich, it's not going to happen. But if you if you collect hockey cards with the idea of having some some fun talking points. You can, you can do a lot worse than a hockey card. So here's Bernie Nichols. This is the last one I'll read. Despite missing time in 1991 due to a dislocated shoulder and a league-imposed suspension, Bernie still finished second on the Rangers in scoring. It was his ninth straight year with at least 25 goals. Bernie was outstanding in Game 3 of the Rangers opening round series against the Capitals. He had two goals and two assists to lead his club to a 6-0 win. A charismatic performer who thrives under pressure, Bernie came to the Rangers mid midway through 89-90 in a blockbuster trade with the Kings. He had some outstanding years on Los Angeles, but none better than 88-89. Bernie finished fourth in the league scoring race that season as he posted career highs and goals with 70, assists with 80, and points with 150. So, yeah, from the Bernie Nichols card. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, we'll get over what's going on out there. I know the numbers right now are kind of stunning. We knew they were going to be in that level. They're going to be at that level for a while. And uh, if we all do what we're supposed to do, the world will go back to normal. And I still have fingers crossed that it'll get back to normal sooner rather than later. But again, we're in this probably for a while. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And this is more of a just for fun for me video and to anybody who enjoys it out there i'm i'm glad i can provide some enjoyment and uh, i will open the rest of these cards and probably find some fun stuff in there to share with people at a later time i i do recommend for people who haven't bought or read ken reed's books on hockey cards uh ken reed's writ written two very good books on hockey cards and for me it's it's something that i look at and i think man why didn't i think of that it really is because hockey cards were kind of my thing all the way through the 80s and the 90s and here we are now and it's like oh i should be writing a hockey card book rather than the science fiction crap i was writing i should be writing books on hockey cards oh well ken reed bought beat me to it and he does a pretty good job thank you guys so much for all your support i'll be here every day and i will talk to you again soon